sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer, that calls me from a world of care, and bids me at my Father's throne make all my wants and wishes known. In seasons of distress and grief, my soul has often found relief and oft escaped the tempest snare by thy return, sweet hour of prayer. Sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer, thy wings shall my petition bear. To him whose truth and faithfulness engage the waiting soul to bless. And since he bids me seek his face, believe his word and trust his grace, I'll cast on him my every care and wait for thee.
This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and let us be glad in it. This is a day we talk about Jesus as the bread of life. He says it himself. He says, I am the bread of life. Whoever eats that bread will live forever. I am the bread of life. I'm the very stuff of what life is. I'm the very essence of life. And it's quite a journey for us as Christians to finally accept that, to see Jesus as that which sustains everything, that which sustains all of life. And it's a wonderful, wonderful thought. Here he is sustaining all of life that you and I know, not only ours, but all around us. The service of morning prayer begins with simply invoking the name of God, God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia, the Spirit of the Lord renews the face of the earth. O come, come let us worship. Psalm 131. O Lord, I am not proud. I have no haughty looks. I do not occupy myself with great matters or with things that are too hard for me, but I still my soul and make it quiet. Like a child upon its mother's breast, my soul is quieted within me. O Israel, wait upon the Lord from this time forth, even forevermore. God of the earthquake, wind, and fire, may we know you also in the voice of silence. Teach us the way of quiet, that we may find our peace in your presence. In the pattern of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The psalm today is from Psalm 51, verses 1 to 12. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know I have transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you alone, have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight, so that you are justified in your sentence and blameless when you pass judgment. Indeed, I was born guilty, a sinner, when my mother conceived me. You desire truth in the inward being. Therefore, teach me wisdom in my secret heart. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and sustain me in me a willing spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The tenth Sunday after Pentecost, Ephesians 4, 1 to 16. This letter is from Paul, chosen by God to be an apostle Christ Jesus. It is written to God's holy people in Ephesus who are faithful followers of Christ Jesus. I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing, with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all 
and in all. But each of us was given grace according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore, it is said, when he ascended on high, he made captivity itself a captive. He gave gifts to his people. When it says he ascended, what does it mean? But that he had also descended into the lower parts of the earth. He who descended is the same one who ascended far above all the heavens so that he might fill all things. The gifts he gave were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ until all of us came to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to maturity, to the measure of the full stature of Christ. We must no longer be children tossed to and fro and blown about by every wind of doctrine, by people's trickery, by their craftiness in deceitful scheming. But speaking the truth in love, we must grow up in a way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and knitted together by every ligament with which it is equipped, as each part is working properly, promotes the body's growth in building itself up in love. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you, and also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So when the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the lake, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, very truly, I tell you, you are looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus answered them, this is the work of God, that you believe in him who he has sent. So they said to him, What sign are you going to give us then, so that we may see it and believe you? What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate manna in the wilderness. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you. Lord Jesus Christ. I am the bread of life, Jesus said. I am the bread of life. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. I do most of the shopping now because I do a lot of the cooking in our house since I am semi-retired. And when I go shopping, I try to go early, very early, seven o'clock in the morning if I possibly can. I found that the store I usually shop at has now moved its summer hours back, actually, rather than earlier, it's later. So I have to go to new stores that are open at seven. And one of them that I go to now is much, much bigger than the others, much, much, much bigger. And I go into that store and I'm thinking, I've got a list here, and one of my lists is bread. 
Now, bread seems to be a simple thing. And when I was a kid, it was a very simple thing. We had what we used to call a corner store. They call them convenience stores now, but they're not very convenient because it used to be right down the block. You could just walk there and get your corner store and get a loaf of bread. And when you go now to these huge big stores, you go to the area where they sell bread and I'm boggled by what I see. I have no idea what to get because there are things there beginning with non-gluten bread. And then there are breads that are rye and uh, different kinds of wheat, oat bread, rye bread. Uh, and then there's dark bread and there's white bread and there's kind of semi-dark bread and there's dark rye. And then you go through this whole list of different kinds of wheat, whole wheat, 20% wheat, 60%, 80% whole wheat. And by the time you're getting through all of this, it says enriched bread and you're saying, what do I get? What am I supposed to be getting here? I have no idea because bread was used to be just bread and now it's very complicated. It's very hard to figure it out. Bread comes in all kinds of varieties. In Jesus' day, bread was very simple. Being in Palestine, in a very hot and difficult area, they had to bake bread almost every day. And bread, you and I have reduced bread to, you know, a nice little thing that you make either sandwiches for, for kids that are going to school, or if you're like me and you're older and you don't have kids going to school anymore, you might occasionally have a sandwich. Well, we don't have sandwiches very often, so, you know, it doesn't really make much difference of what kind of bread I get, but I want to get what's healthy. And sometimes along the way, we have to remember what Jesus' bread was, was very hard crust bread. It was like, more like a roll. And it was done that way because of the temperatures in those areas and the problems they had with keeping things fresh. So you broke the bread to get the stuff inside, which was soft, but outside was hard. It was hard. It was tempered to be baked hard so that it wouldn't get dirty or it wouldn't have be affected by the climate. Uh, and that way, that bread was meant to be taken with you. You could just stuff it in your pocket. You could do anything with it because it would keep, with that hard crust on it, would keep for a long period of time. We don't make bread quite that way anymore. I mean, you'll see all those new baked breads that they bring out, the new ones they put in little bins and things, and some of them have very hard crusts, but not quite as hard as the crust you would have found on the bread in Jesus' time. In fact, when Jesus says, I'm the bread of life, he's saying, yeah, I'm what sustains life, but there's a hardness to me too. There's the soft inside, the love of God, but the outside is tough. And it's tough sometimes that life you and I face is tough. It's not, he's not making it simple. He's by saying bread is, yes, that which provides life, but it's also not always just such a simple thing as you think. It's not a soft loaf, it's a tough loaf. And that toughness is what life can be about. When I was growing up, there used to be a, a, a kitchen item that y you won't find anymore in kitchens. I mean, it was something that everybody had when I was growing up. It was called a bread box. And a bread box was usually made out of aluminum or tin or something, and it sat over in the kitchen. And that's where you put the bread. You know, you would set the bread, you'd cut some loaf, or you'd have a loaf that's pre-cut. And then when you're done making a sandwich, you put it in the bread box. Now, the only problem with bread boxes is that they would either have little holes in them that the ants could get into, or if you didn't use up your bread long, you know, quite often, you get stale or hard bread. And so bread boxes have gone the way of the dodo. They have disappeared because people now take their bread and put it into the refrigerator usually, or they, you know, or they use up the loaf fairly quickly. But the bread box used to, in a sense, be that which would hold what we needed. Uh, and it provided for us a sense that here's the bread and the bread is almost ancillary. It's, a, it's an extra thing that we have in our kitchen just in case we need it. And that's the way bread's become in our modern world. It's more like in case we need it. Um, when you go to restaurants now, you sometimes get either a basket or a roll or something put on with bread. And you sort of eat that beforehand. It probably makes you less hungry when your full meal comes. But we see that as kind of a lead-in, something like a, a aperitif, if you will, a, a beginning to meal. And we don't see it as part of the meal itself, but something we add to the meal. We're waiting for the real meal to come. Well, so bread has been relegated less and less to a standard of ours. Well, people in the modern world say, well, it's, it's fattening. You know, why would I want bread? I've got to put butter on it, then that's greasy, and there's all kinds of things. So why would I need a lot of bread? And yet Jesus is saying bread is the stuff of life. And in many respects, we've forgotten that. 
the bread of life is what gives us a sense of who we are. And in communion, we break the bread and share the bread. And we remind ourselves that bread is the most simple part of feeding people. You know, go back to the days when <laughs> prisoners and people in, in cells were given bread and water. That was all they got. And that sustained their life, bread and water. So growing up in a time where we saw these breads being pushed off to the side, it's probably allowed us to push bread more and more to the side. And yet when Jesus is in the wilderness, what does he want? And what does he need? And what does Satan say you can have? You can turn stones into bread, into that which will keep you going, into that which will keep you and keep you from falling down and, and falling apart, that bread will sustain you for the journey. Somewhere along the way, Jesus says, I am the bread of life, and you and I need Jesus for that life-sustaining energy. We need him to be that bread that keeps us going. Paris, a few years ago, had an interesting thing happen. Uh, Paris, in France, uh, is opening up vending machines. And vending machines, when you talk about them here in Canada, we talk about, you know, usually uh, treats or snacks or cans of pop. That's, that's kind of the usual vending machine stuff. But in Paris, they opened up vending machines that would sell baguettes. Now, if you know what baguettes are, they're, they're a long, hard row of, of bread, long, hard lo loaf of bread. And the French love those breads. They just love those baguettes. And those baguettes, they take cheese and wine and a baguette, and that's how they have their lunch. They go off into the park in Paris or somewhere, and that's what they have. They bring their knife out, and they cut the cheese, and they cut the bread, and they have a little glass of wine. That's their lunch. Well, that's an interesting part. <laughs> I don't think I'd ever see a baguette fending machine here in Canada. But for Northern Europeans who were not French or Italian, we have not used bread so much as seeing it as just something else on the side. And that's unfortunate because the French and the Italians and people in the Mediterranean world see it as part of what it is to be alive and to share and to be there. Because bread isn't just something for you, it's something we share. When you buy a baguette, it's long, and so you have to share it with other people. You have to cut it up and give it out to other people along the way. And that's what communion is supposed to be. You know, that when the old days, when Jesus, on the night of his Last Supper, took bread, he took bread and tore it apart, and he doled it out to everybody. He shared it out with everybody. It was meant to be a shared meal, something that we all had part of. And that's the way, as I say, communion should be, that we are sharing out the bread of life with everyone there. And Jesus said, I am the bread of life. I am that bread of life which gives life to everything. There's a Christian magazine that's very inspirational called Our Daily Bread. And the daily bread is meant to feed us each day. It's meant to inspire us each day. Um, it's a nice little magazine if you haven't seen it. There are certainly others, and one we have here is Forward Day by Day, we give out for people. But it's meant to say, we need that. We need that each day. We need to be inspired and guided us, and guided along the way. And that's what taking bread is not just once in our life, but it's an ongoing thing. In other words, Yes, we were baptized as Christians. Yes, we might have been confirmed as Christians in certain traditions. And yes, we may take communion once in our life or once every so often or whatever it might be. But Jesus says, I'm the bread of life and bread is meant to be given fresh each day. That's what they did in Israel. Um, the people would always bake bread fresh every single day. Why? Because people needed it every day, and it didn't keep. You didn't have a bread box, and if a bread box was there, it wouldn't last anyway. And go back to the Old Testament. What did they get from heaven? Manna. You couldn't keep manna. Manna would go bad. You had to eat it as it came. You had to fit, eat it out each day and be fed by God. And that's exactly what Jesus means. I'm the bread of life. I need to be feeding you, and you need to be taking me in every single day. Now that's hard. I mean, it's really hard for people to see that. But the experience of taking Jesus in and becoming part of Jesus, of finding Jesus in your life, is an ongoing process. It's not just once in your life. You need to be fed constantly. And you and I know that. Deep down we know that. One of the people who was uh, most interesting to me was a lady in Blind River, my first parish, who was constantly preaching Jesus all the time. And Jesus loves me, Jesus does this for me, Jesus does that for me. Tragically, her son was killed one winter on a 
his snowmobile went through the ice and he drowned. She basically turned away from Christian faith. She turned away from Christianity altogether because she thought, if Jesus loves me, I'm always with, with me. And she couldn't see that through the tragedies and difficulties of life, we still need Jesus to be feeding us through those hard times. Through the hard times as well as the good times. Will, when will we not, you know, you and I will always have those hard times. When will it always be easy for us? Well, life is never going to be easy for us. Never is going to be simple. And so we need to be sustained each day and every day and know that Jesus walks with us. When he says, I'm the bread of life, I don't think he expects you to take communion every day, but I do think he expects you to see him as that which sustains you each day, to take time to be with him, to take time with Jesus, to talk with him and share with him and be with him because he is that which will sustain you and will sustain me. The last few Sundays I've been doing services down in Utopia and Ivy. They were little towns that are out from Barrie. And the people there are just wonderful. They're, they're really good people. I've enjoyed it very much. But driving there is one of the greatest things I can do on Sunday. On Sunday, I drive down there from where I live in Aurelia, and the corn is just incredibly high when I see, pass it in the fields. Uh, the soya beans are growing up all kinds of ways. They've got to dry out, of course, before they can be used. And what's really interesting is the wheat. The wheat is tasseling, and it's uh, golden in the fields. And I look at that wheat and I realize out in British Columbia and Saskatchewan and Alberta and even in Manitoba, there's been such terrible weather that probably a lot of their wheat is not going to come in really well this year. But here in Ontario, we have an abundance of wheat to share. And that got me thinking about sharing. How do we share the bread of life? How do we share that wheat that, that becomes the bread of our lives? How do we share Jesus, the bread of life, with the world around us? Because around us, the world, it's tough news. I mean, every morning you can get up and hear about pandemic spreading. Nearly 1,500 people a day are dying in Brazil. Nearly 1,000 a day in India or more. And we don't even know the real number. There are so many people here in Canada who have lost friends and relatives, husbands, wives, children. It's been a terrible time through this pandemic. And we need to stop and remind ourselves we need to share Jesus, who is the bread of our lives. We need to share his hopes and his love and his care and his grace. To say the bread of life is to say, yes, he sustains us each day, but he should sustain everyone everywhere. And somewhere along the way, you and I have a mission to share the bread of life. Not only to rip it apart and pass it out or in communion to pass out the bread, but to share God's love with people all around us, to share Jesus Christ, his grace, his mercy, his care, because the world is always going to be struggling. We will have pandemics, we will have wars, we will have accidents, we will have things that happen in all kinds of ways. The other day they finally finished carrying out the last of the bodies in that terrible collapse of a building in Florida. The last of the people were finally brought out. And all of those things will happen and people will be devastated. The families and friends are devastated down there. And you and I will face such painful times but go back to this bread that I sort of talked to you about at the beginning. This bread that they would have baked in the time of Jesus. The outward part is hard. It's crusty. It's meant to be that way, to preserve within it that good bread, that good, soft, wonderful bread that is so good to nourish people. Life will be hard, and a loaf of bread will tell you that. But inside there is such goodness. There is such nurturing. Jesus knows that life will be hard. Maybe Satan, when he said, take rocks and turn them into bread, was really saying, you know, the outward looks rough, rock-like, but you could turn them into loaves to eat, to sustain you. We need to be sustained, and Jesus is the bread of our lives as Christians. We believe that, and that bread will sustain us through hard times. It will see us through the difficulties of our lives. We need him desperately, and we need him daily. And I want to leave you with this one thought, you know, the Lord's Prayer is the name we give to the prayer that Jesus gave us. And what does he say? He says, give us this day our daily bread. It's not just grace for bread. It's a sense that we need it every day of our lives. Give us this day the daily bread we need to be sustained in your faith and your love and your mercy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 
I ask you to join with me as we say the Creed of the Apostles. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead, and on the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The prayers today are taken from the thanksgiving for the anniversary of a parish in the Book of Alternative Services, which seem appropriate to this time in the life of Trinity Berry. We thank you, Almighty God, for the gift of water, which sustains our physical life and through which we are reborn into the life of the Spirit and the bringing in of the kingdom of God on this earth. Almighty God, your eternal word speaks to us through the words of Holy Scripture. In this place of Trinity, we have read of your mighty acts and purposes in history, and here we have learned about those you have chosen to be agents of your will. Inspired by the revelation of your Son, we seek your present purposes. Give us ears to hear and hearts to obey. Almighty God, we have heard your words to us in Holy Scripture and know your call to each of us. In every age you have spoken through the voices of prophets, pastors, and teachers. We give you thanks that over the years we have heard you speak to us through the preaching of your word in this place. Grant that those who preach in this place may proclaim the crucified and risen Christ and interpret your word with sensitivity and insight, that we may hear that word inwardly and respond to it in all our life. These things we ask in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We now pray the litany. Please respond to each prayer saying, We thank you, Lord. For the Church Universal, of which these buildings are a visible symbol, we thank you, Lord. For your presence, whenever two or three are gathered in your name, we thank you, Lord. For this place where we may be still and know that you are God, we thank you, Lord. For the fulfilling of our desires and petitions as you see best for us, we thank you, Lord for our past and a vision of the future that lies ahead. We thank you, Lord. For the gift of the Holy Spirit and new life in baptism, we thank you, Lord. For the pardon of our sins when we have fallen short of your glory, we thank you, Lord. For the Holy Eucharist, in which we have a foretaste of your eternal kingdom, we thank you, Lord. For the blessing of our vows and the crowning of our years with your goodness, we thank you, Lord. For the faith of those who have gone before us and for your encouragement by their perseverance, we thank you, Lord. For all the benefactors of this place who have died in the peace of Christ and are at rest, we thank you, Lord. For the fellowship of all your saints, we thank you, Lord. O oh God, from living and chosen stones, you prepare an everlasting dwelling place for your majesty. Grant that in the power of the Holy Spirit, those who serve you here may always be kept within your presence. This we pray through Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. The Collect for today. Almighty God, your Son Jesus Christ fed the hungry with the bread of his own life and the word of his kingdom to come. Renew your people with your heavenly grace in all our weakness. Sustain us by your true and living bread, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 
gathering our prayers and praises into one, let us pray as our Savior taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Life is short. We do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who travel the way with us. So be swift to love. Make haste to be kind. And may the blessing of God Almighty Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you this weekend and every day. And be careful this long weekend. Take time to be safe. Take time to get where you're going. Do not race about. This is a long weekend. It's meant to recreate and to enjoy and to take the bread of life with you. So be careful. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Amen. <laughs>